Hello nurses, this is Kevin with NursingCamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing in the NCLEX. Today's pulmonary lecture number 13, chest tubes. And from this sticky note found on NursingCamp.com, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and social media. All right, so let's get into it. Let's talk about some reasons for a chest tube and especially with the NCLEX. So generally what would happen is with a patient with a chest tube, it's a device that is... Um, given in acute situations. So the patient with a chest tube, it's acute. And with the NCLEX, it's always monitoring this chest tube or anticipating a patient might get a chest tube. So let's talk about anticipation first. Well, one of the anticipations could be from a, a triple lumen. When a person puts a triple lumen in, you puncture this area where the lungs are, the pleural space, and what happens is it fills up with air. So shortness of breath post chest, post uh, triple lumen is always acute. That could also happen in fusal ports as well. Um, also, uh, patients could have a hemo, which is blood, hemothorax. So some other reasons could be pleural effusions or cancer or abscess, but the most likely is generally post-procedural or um, or complications of other problems like abscesses. All right. Now, um, let's talk about the system itself, the monitoring. And that's a big focus for NCLEX in monitoring the system and in practice. What do we do with a chest tube? Well, the first rule of thumb is when you come to a chest tube and you see a chest tube, is it bubbling, is it not? Now, I'm not talking about the newer chest tubes that are out there. We're talking about the steady systems that are out there. And um, what you'll see in practice, you're going to see what's like a pleurovac system. It's going to have all these chambers in it and um, it's going to be connected to the system and this will go to the patient. But what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about, let's break down this system into what's called um, the three bottle system. And the three bottle system is important to know because in the three bottle system, that's what this is. It's just a fancy way to get a three bottle system, but it's still the same. So in the three bottle system, you have your first section, which is called the suction control. The suction control section should always be bubbling. It is connected to a regulator that will put continuous suction in. So it always should be bubbling, and that should be gentle bubbling. And it shouldn't be um, titling. Now, titling is a word um, which means uh, going up and going down. So it shouldn't be fluctuating, titling going up and down. The next chamber is the uh, water seal chamber, the water seal. Now, I think of a seal living in here, okay? And that's how I remember this. The water seal chamber, as a seal is a mammal, it's gonna go up and down for air. So in the water seal chamber, you will see titling going up and down. Um, so you should see fluctuating and titling. What you shouldn't see is is continuous bubbling. Because if this seal let go of all its oxygen, it, was, it would be, uh, it would die. And rule number one is we don't kill patients. But the principle is, is that on a water seal chamber, um, a seal might let out some bubbles every once in a while. That's called intermittent bubbling. And for patients um, in the water seal chamber, you'll see intermittent bubbling. You're not gonna see continuous though. So with the seal, it's gonna go up and down and you'll see titling and you'll also see intermittent bubbling. Now we'll go to the next chamber. And this is called the collection chamber. And in the collection chamber, you shouldn't see titling. It shouldn't go up and down because you're collecting fluid from the uh, patient. And um, you shouldn't see bubbling. Okay, because it's just a collection chamber. And the rule of thumb is greater than 100 cc's is acute, and a doctor should be notified. Um, we're not talking about a, a chest tube that is just put in, though, because a chest tube that's just put in is, um, you might get more than 100 cc's, but we're talking continuous monitoring. So let's go through this really quick again. So in this first chamber, we have a suction control chamber. That should be always gently bubbling. It shouldn't be vigorous. If it is vigorous, we turn down suction. Okay, to 
regulate to make sure it's gently bubbling. It should be at 20 cm of suctioning. What that means is a water level that should be at 20 cm. And it is marked on there, 20 cm. If it is not, then we will fill it with sterile water to that 20 cm line. That will provide the proper amount of function. 20 cm tends to be the norm. There is 10 cc's and stuff like that, but don't worry about that too much. The norm is 20 cc's. The next chamber is the water seal chamber. You're gonna see intermittent bubbling going up. You're seeing intermittent bubbling. You won't see continuous bubbling. If there's continuous bubbling, it is an air leak. There's a problem with the system or there's a connection problem with the patient. If you see a, uh, um, no titling, that's also a problem with the system. Or the patient needs to turn, cough, deep breathe. Okay. Um, <clears throat> next thing, in the collection chamber, you should see no bubbling and no titling, no going up and down. And the drainage should, if it's greater than 100 cc's, um, that's a problem. There's three types of drainage you're going to see. You're going to see a straw colored, which is called alba, that's more pleural fluid. You'll see serosanguinous, which is kind of pinkish, um, and that's okay. Alba's okay, serosanguinous is okay. Sanguinous, or dark red, is acute, and that's a problem, and that should be further evaluated. Okay, so let's talk about some specific problems that you might have with a chest tube. Well, the first thing with a chest tube is when you walk in a room, you see a chest tube. Is it bubbling? Is it not? And then what you'll see is, is that if the chest tube has, um, where's the location? Okay. So if it's higher, it's probably a pneumo because ear goes up, right? So it's probably a pneumo. You probably see more alba and serosanguinous. But if it is lower, that is most likely be in for a hemo. So you're going to be monitoring for bleeding in greater than 100 cc's is acute. All right, so let's talk about some other problems that you might see. All right, so let's talk about its dislodgement. It falls out of the patient. Okay, well, you immediately pinch the skin together, and then you basically will cover with an occlusive dressing that is taped on three sides. And um, that follow agency policy. Anaclex tends to stay away from this dislodgement. However, in nursing school, you're going to see it in questions. But generally what you do is you put an occlusive dressing over it. Now, what about if it's been dislodged from the system? Well, that's when you take it, you take that tube and you put it into sterile water. You submerge it into one to two inches of sterile water or normal saline, and then you follow policy. You notify doctor. Okay, so let's talk about some other factors. Well, what about if the ch chest tube um, uh, falls over? Well, you put it back up if it's a closed system, and then you reassess the patient. You always keep the level of the chest tube below the waist, so it's always below the bed. Okay. So some other things that you have to worry about with the chest tube is that when you're looking at NCLEX questions, chest tubes will always be about monitoring. You always have the chest tube has been put in and then you are monitoring. So you're always looking at monitoring either bleeding or ear leaks. So on the patient, what are some signs of some ear leaks? Well, you could have crepitus. And crepitus is subcutaneous emphysema, which basically means in the pleural space of the, not the pleural space, in the subcutaneous tissue where the chest tube is, ear is being, and this could feel like what they call Rice Krispies, they're popping. So if you feel crepitus, there's an ear leak of some sort. Doctors should be notified. However, a patient, look at the patient first. You don't always take a chest tube out just because you have a mild ear leak. Um, also, uh, signs and symptoms of infection because you know, and also the thing is, is that chest tube will be sutured in place as well. Okay, it's going to be sutured in place, and so we monitor that patient, and we always monitor for reoccurring pneumos and hemothorax. Well, that's a general overview of this chest tube, and. Um,
And this sticky note found on nursingcamp.com, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest. And uh, follow me, like me, or share me. We'll see you next time and nurse on.